Hello everyone, this is Games You Should Know by Hoyt and I'm Dennis Borosh and today we're going to talk about something most of the chess players are interested in and that's AI, artificial intelligence and more specifically computer chess the game match played between Stockfish and Google Alpha Zero. Now, when I was thinking about this lecture, I thought about AI, and my first thought was Blade Runner, the movie, in 19, made in 1982, when the professor sat down and played <laughs> Professor yeah. Tyrell, started playing with Sebastian, but Sebastian used some device he shouldn't have, a replicant, so basically he was playing advanced chess of some sort, because Beatty, a replicant, is a created structure, an artificial intelligence that helped Sebastian beat the doctor. Now, whenever I was thinking of this match, I realized that Be that Alpha Zero is much like Beatty. Alpha Zero is just like Michal Tal built as a computer. So let's take a look first at the game played by Tal. So this is one of many famous games of Michal Tal, the eighth world champion. And I'll show this game because with this, you'll understand that Alpha Zero is basically playing chess like Tal, just with a little bit more hardware. Knight f3, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, d5, d4. Ironically, this way of transposing also happens in Alpha Zero's games. He also plays knight f3, starting with a ready and turning into a mainline opening c6, bishop g5, d takes c4, e4, b5. This is the Botvinnik variation, but Tal doesn't want to get into main lines. He goes in his own way and plays a4. Now this is kind of annoying, because if you play b4, for example, I'll just play knight b1, drop back, and I plan to go to knight d2 and pick up the pawn on c4. So Keller really doesn't have a choice. He plays queen b6. Now Tal takes on f6. G takes f6. Bishop e2. a6. Castle. Bishop b7. And now Tal makes a very, very classical breakthrough. Can anybody help me how he will break through in this position? d5. d5. Yes. C takes d5. E takes d5. And what Tal calculates here, or banks on, is the idea that he is more developed than black, so it's just about time to open up the position. In sense, in, when talking about development, black's position is a little bit dubious from that perspective. b4, a5, queen c7, and without hesitation, Tal takes on e6. And this is approved by computers. It's a very good sacrifice. And this is the chess, what we will see later on, by AlphaGo. B takes c3, knight d4. Now, obviously, Tal makes some mistakes in this game. But the basis of his game is very sound. So rook g8, queen a4 check, king d8. And because the threat of rook takes g2 is way too strong. The world champion plays g3 and gets rid of that threat. Bishop d5. And here, Tal plays a very strong and logical move. What is that? Well, white has two pieces attacking. Rook d1, of course, bringing in some more heavy artillery. King c8 and b takes c3. Now, b takes c3 is the sort of move that is very hard to find because you're looking for a killer blow, but you're not quite there yet. Bishop c5, e7. Not wanting black to take the pawn and also threatening to queen. 
So knight c6, bishop g4 check. King b7's only move as rook takes fails to the simple idea of queening. Now already we can see this is a crazy position. And notice that Tal played it in 1960. So he plays like the computer without the, the software. I mean hardware. King b7, knight b5. Putting some more fuel on the fire. So if you take, my queen will get much closer. And after bishop b6, I can take. Queen takes b6, and eventually all of your pieces drop. I can just check, maybe I can't check you, but take, take, and minimum prize I'll take the bishop, but I still will have a good position. Well, actually, queen takes d5 is just very strong here. Not that queen b6 is too bad. So queen e5, and again, Tal just plays logical, dominating chess. What move did he find? Played rook e1 first, and then he played this dominating move. Bishop f3, I'll defend with f5, or even rook g3, which would be more painful. No, because I still have rook takes g3 ideas. You don't want to get into rook takes g3 stuff. Rook takes g3. Rook b1, indeed. Small moves, but very powerful ones. Black has trouble moving the qu king. Can't really take because I'll just take with my queen and mate is soon to follow. Let's say here here, and I know that the computer doesn't want to go there, but queen d7 checkmates. Very, very picturesque position from a human. So obviously, Keller didn't want that, so it took on g4. Rook takes c4, brutal sacrifice. Queen takes c4, knight d6, check. Double check again, takes, takes, with queen d1. Rook e5, and again, another bombshell by Tal on the 29th move. Rook b7, king takes, queen d7, king b8. Queens, takes, takes, king b7, queen d7 again, and queen takes c6. And basically, Tal is winning, and black resigned. So I believe that Tal was the forefather or the main way off a zero plays. And actually, coming back to my example from Blade Runner, ir ironically, Tal in 1980 reached the rating of 2700, which I would really put in the ballpark of like 2800 now or 2830. And if you think Tal, he reached his highest peak rating of 2700 in the 1980s, which really doesn't calculate his results when he beat Botvinnik in the 1960s and his game results in the 1960s and 61s year. So coming back to Alpha Zero, I have some quotes about that machine. So Alpha Zero won the match against Stockfish. 20, with 28 wins, 72 draws, and no losses. So this is what some quotes I've got from Twitter and some from chess.com. Kasparov said, it's a remarkable achievement, even if we should have expected it after AlphaGo. It approaches the type B human-like approach to machine chess dreamt of by Claude Shannon and Alan Turing instead of brute force. And I would agree, mostly Alpha Zero is going to use the human way of approaching the game instead of just calculating. Peter Heinen Nielsen said the following, seeing the games I thought, well, I always wondered how it would be if a superior species landed on Earth and showed us how to play chess. 
I feel now. How that that would feel. So Swidler also had an opinion about this, who is now an eighth-time Russian champion, but was seventh, uh, seventh-time Russian champion at that moment. He said, I do not belong to the reasonable large group of people who are seemingly very skeptical about this achievement. So he's not too skeptical about this result. And he gave this interview to Chess24. Nakamura said to Chess.com, it's definitely interesting. That being said, having looked at the games and the understanding what the playing strength was, I don't necessarily put a lot of credibility in the results. Now, to be honest, I mostly agree with Nakamura because even though AlphaGo plays like an enhanced Mihal Tal, and I think his level should be around that, but I'll talk about that later on. Um, the match didn't seem totally fair because the match was played without opening books. But that kind of favored AlphaGo. As Stockfish, his opponent, or its opponent, didn't have opening books, so it had to rely on just poor, pure hardware. So it's not quite clear if that's not just an advantage for AlphaGo for no reason. And I'd say that it would be much fairer to do another match with a different computer or the same one with a computer having a good opening book. And we will see in the games how that affected the match. So let's dig in and take a look at game one. So, yes, knight f3, knight c6, b6. This is the game. I talked about alpha zero just like Mihal Tal plays with knight f3 c4 in the Reiti version, version, but then transposes bishop a6, queen c2, c5, d5 sacrifice. Now this was popularized by none other than Alexei Shirov, and also I analyzed this with my friend Imre Hera, and he wrote a very very good book on this. Actually. I'm mentioned as one of the contributors. E takes d5, c takes d5, bishop b7, bishop g2. Now this is going to be a pawn sacrifice. And it's very admirable that Alpha Zero found this idea without any proper um, opening knowledge. On the critical note though, Stockfish shouldn't have entered this position because it's very dangerous for black. Knight takes d5, castle, knight c6, rook d1, bishop e7, queen f5. Now notice that there's no rook takes d5 winning material because knight b4, double attack. This is all well known. So queen f5 was played, knight f6, e4, g6, queen f4, castle, e5, knight h5. Now this was already played in a game between Galfond and Leiko, and also in later games, I mean previous games, Queen H6 was played against Leiko previously. So what White is playing for here is more of the play of domination. He doesn't really mind being a pawn down because this pawn on E5 is just dominating and stops any pawn breaks with d6 or f6. And this is much like in the spirit of Mihal Tal, who didn't care as much about material, but about domination. And as we will see, Alpha Zero shows the human approach of going for domination in, instead of material. Queen g4, rook e8, knight c3, queen b8, knight d5. Bishop f8. Well, again, the pawn on e5 is taboo, because if you take, I take you, queen takes, c5 takes, and the bishop on b7 drops. And this, this is just clearly winning for white. Knight d5, bishop f8, bishop f4. He doesn't really mind getting rid of his bishop, because for exchange for that bishop, he would get this juicy square of f6, which would almost immediately decide the game. So queen c8, h3. 
Now, I find this H3 move mysterious. I don't quite get the idea. Maybe to vacate this square for the king on H2, but that's still hard to explain. And in fact, later on we will see alpha zero loves this H3, H6 moves for reasons I don't understand. Knight E7, Knight E3. Now, computers would, would kind of disagree in this position. Stockfish would say that, okay, black is better because of a lot of material advantage, but us humans love domination a lot. You know, alpha zero is basically like a human on hardwares, and he feels that this should be good enough. Bishop c6, defending that extra pawn on d7. Rook d6, domination number one. He's trying to blockade this pawn, kind of deeming it worthless. And if you notice, this knight on h5 has a trouble moving around, and all of black pieces looks more like a wardrobe than a real position. Knight g7, not a fun move to make again, although trying to untangle with knight f5. Rook f6, so just like playing checkers, he's trying to get full control of both d6 and f6 squares. And if he manages to overload black's position, black is just going to lose. Queen v7, bishop h6. Knight d5, knight d5, very logical, trying to exchange them up material. Rook d1, knight e6, inviting some more exchanges, takes, takes, queen h4, bishop c6, queen h6. Well, not quite there yet, but knight g5 looms in the air. So this knight on e6 is stuck there forever. Also, another idea that comes to mind is h4, h5 threatening h takes g6, and also this kind of reminds me of the famous game played by Short and Timon, where black is kind of stuck waiting and has nothing going for him against the active white pieces, rook e8, rook d6, and now black is in full Nelson as the rook on d6 f6 and the queen on h6 just binds black. Bishop takes f3, a little bit of desperation, takes queen a6, h4. Not really paying attention to these worthless pawns as he's trying to do our aforementioned plan of h5. Queen a5, rook d1, defending against this nasty check that black was setting up. c4, Rook d5, but he's not willing to give away this anchor, this e5 pawn, which makes white's position superior. Queen e1, king g2, c3, takes, takes, h5, rook e7, bishop d1. Now, white realized that the bishop would have much more firepower here and just destroy black's position if the bishop would manage to enter that square on b3. Queen e1, bishop b3, rook d8. And looking at this with a human eye, this is totally winning for white. Rook f3, queen e4, queen d2, queen g4, bishop d1. Just playing for discoveries, planning this nice little rook takes f7 trick. Black doesn't fall for it because it's a machine. h6, knight c7, rook d6, knight e6, just waiting because he doesn't see anything else to do. Bishop b3, queen takes e5, rook d5, queen h8, rook b4. And even though black is many, many pawns up, it doesn't mean anything because this these pieces on d8 and h8 are just so terrible, it just compensates for the extra two pawns. Knight c5, rook takes c5, b takes c5, queen h4, rook e8, rook f6. And what I noticed when looking through some of the games of alpha zero, and actually there's only 10 that you can find and look at, he goes for domination. 
anytime when it's possible. About positional play, well, I'm not sure about that. It's not as good as with positions where he can dominate. Rook f8, but much more about that later. Queen f4. And now, basically, white is totally winning because this queen is just worthless. And that's quite a nice performance by alpha zero, just entrapping this queen on h8. And black can only wait to get finished off. a4, g4, b5 takes, rook b7, a4, g5, just cementing that rook on f6, and just supported by this pawn on f6. A3, that does nothing, black. And white just do, does something that computers rarely do. He's waiting. He's not doing anything. He's just saying, OK, tell me what you're going to do next. Rook c7, queen takes a3. And black, basically, the stockfish ape just gives up. And after this, the a4 pawn will slowly promote. And white wins. Game two will be another blowout by alpha zero. And another sacrificial variation. And just to be a bit critical of this match, one thing that Stockfish didn't get good openings. And alpha zero did show that it shines bright. So Demis Hasabe's computer shines greatly. And we can see that in the style of Michal Tal, Alpha Zero plays beautiful chess. But the thing that I didn't notice is how would Alpha Zero play in positional play. And what Stockfish didn't do is have very solid positions. For example, never seen games with d5 g3, bishop e7, or bishop b4, check. These are more positional and calm games that I didn't get to experience. And I would be really curious what Alpha Zero would have had in his sleeve or in its sleeve against it. Because I admit, Alpha Zero, after just four hours of learning, playing these uh, sacrificial lines, it plays brilliantly, but I'm more skeptical about its strength in positional positions. E takes d5, knight h4. And before we go much further, we have to name a grandmaster who's famous for inventing d5, and his name is Lev Pologayevsky. He put hard hours of work mainly playing and preparing against Viktor Korchnoi. So he found this brilliant idea of d5. And this proves to be a brilliant idea, as alpha 0 finds it as the best line in the position. Knight h4, c6, c takes d5, knight takes d5, knight f5. We've seen this position before, though. This was played between Kasparov and Karpov so Kasparov already had this position um, in a world championship match, in fact. And what I dislike about this game is that Stockfish never really gets the chance to fight back. He already has a crummy little position and will have to have a very tough task defending a position where he has a terrible bishop on b7, terrible wardrobe-like pieces on a8 and b8 and b7. So alpha zero gets the initiative from the get-go. So it, it's basically almost over before it ever started. Knight c7, e4, bishop f6, knight d6. Again, domination. What alpha zero goes, uh, goes for is the domination of Michal Tal, going for a good, good piece for a pawn. Bishop e a6, rook e1, knight e8. And if we think like alpha 0, what would be our next move be? E5. E5, of course. Very good move in the style of Tal. And if, after knight d6, as Tal would do it, he'd take the bishop. And I'm not sure it's 
all inbuilt in computers these days, but bishop pair in general is worth a pawn. So that second pawn is compensated by these two beautiful beasts on g2 and c1. Queen takes f6, knight c3. Now, black has a tough time organizing his pieces. Yes, he's two pawns up, but those pawns on d7 and c6 are just in the way of this knight, so it cannot really develop. No wonder black is trying to untangle with knight b7, kind of hoping to play d5 at some moment. Knight e4, bringing some more pieces into action. And again, alpha zero finds the best way to harass black in this position. How can we harass black, and especially this queen on g6? h4, yes, of course. h6, h5, queen h7, queen g4. Oh, you said queen d4? Queen d4. Oh, deeper, okay. So queen g4. Queen g4 is a very nice move. King h8. Bishop g5. And this is purely a move not played by computers. This is really, it feels that this is the heritage of Tal. Maybe Bronstein. So Bronstein does deserve credit too. He also liked these deep positional sacrifices. So okay, Stockfish believes off a zero, but if h takes g5, we just take, and if queen c2, bam, we'll take on f7. If you take another gift, then you'll regret that badly, because after bishop e4, your days are numbered. And after g6, queen takes g6, mate. It's a nice little mate. And we can see that all these pieces on a8, b8, b7, and a6 didn't do anything. So they're useless. And if black would play queen g8, which no grandmaster would play, because they would rather resign on the spot, then white has this move of queen h4, just preparing the immediate h6 with the plan of h takes g7. And any computer would agree that white has a huge attack, if not just totally winning. So alpha zero was believed, and Stockfish plays f5, played f5, so Stockfish played f5, queen f4. Now, it's impossible to take, because I would just take on f8. Knight c5, he wants to exchange some more, bishop e7. And again, knight d3, queen d6, takes, takes. And white is again not worried about pieces, because this knight is kind of condemned to live a life without ever entering the game, because all of those squares are taken right now. All of these squares on d6, d7, c6, a6 are taken. So basically, black is playing a rook and knight down, which is never a good thing. F takes e4, bishop takes e4, rook f5, bishop h4. White is in no hurry because it will take some quite a few moves for black to untangle. Bishop c4, g4, just slowly and calmly collecting material. Rook b5, takes, takes. Rook e8, bishop g8, bishop g3, c5, queen d5. And white just collects the extra material, and now he's just clearly winning. d6 takes, knight d7, queen e4. A very human approach. Let's just get rid of your only active piece, which is very passive, but it can get aggressive it, if it ever got the chance to bolt out and go to b1 or d3. So queen e4 is very good. Knight f6 takes, rook e7, and let's just enjoy a little bit of technique from alpha zero. Knight takes g4, rook takes a7, knight f6, bishop takes d6, 
bishop e6, bishop e5, trying to tie this bishop, tie to, trying to just pin down this knight, knight d7, bishop c3, g6, bishop d2. Now I find this move a little bit mysterious. I would think that most of the humans would just take the pawn, play a3 and b4, and win that way. But alpha 0 goes a different way and plays bishop d2. Let's black take the pawn a3, king g6, bishop f4, just aiming to attack the b6 pawn, king f5, bishop c7, h4, rook a8, h5, rook h8, king g6, rook d8, king f7. Well, to be honest, I feel that white is kind of tangoing a little bit, not doing too much, just enjoying being some material up. King h3, rook h8, king g6, rook e8, wait, bishop e6. And slowly but surely, white converts. He just improved his king a little bit. And now king g1, which is weird, because if I remember correctly, the king started from there. So that's kind of interesting. c4, king h2. Now that's kind of strange. Takes knight a4, knight c5, rook e5, rook d5. I assume he didn't want to take the pawn because he was worried of knight d4, double attacking, and maybe some play. So instead, rook d5, bishop e6, rook d6, bishop e1, king e5. And now, slowly but surely, black is losing. And etc. white manages to win. F4, knight e7, takes the pawn, and he will win this slowly but surely. So, we've seen these games, and I want to take a look at game the third game that I saw this one with d5 and now this will be a severe test for alpha 0 and I'm not really amazed by its play in these type of positions this will be more like of a positional struggle and to be honest I wasn't as amazed when he was playing tactical positions. When he was playing tactical positions, I think it's really on the highest level. It's very on the super elite level when it plays. And again, it's kind of unfortunate that they're not playing with opening books, because this d5 is a very bad move. It just closes in this bishop on b7. And I have to agree with Nakamura that Stockfish didn't have as much hardware or the needed opening books to challenge Alpha Zero. And we could see that with, the, with moves like D5. And to really get a good challenge for Alpha Zero, you need to find a computer or a human that has enough opening knowledge to go against it. Now, one idea would be to set up a double blind tournament with, let's say, Carlsen, Nakamura, Caruana, and Kramnik playing with computers like Stockfish, Alpha Zero, Komodo, and etc. But without any of them knowing if they're playing a human or a computer. That way we could decide if their objective strength is kind of close or far in between. And also, then, the psychological advantage of computers wouldn't matter. At least it wouldn't matter from the human perspective, because when humans play computers, we run into the trouble of them believing computers of being faultless, which is not true. I don't believe it's true. And we will see it in the upcoming three games. So castles, castles, c takes, e takes, knight c3, all great. And very natural moves, knight d7, b4. Full points for positional play. Now b4 is trying to 
build a structure that goes against the black pawn break at c5. And this is a very usual positional move. It's known for years. It was played many times in the Karpov-Kasparov matches. c6, very natural. If b5, then black would play c5 and would have this classical, I mean, hanging pawns, which could be a weakness, but it could also be a positive too. So queen b2, a5, b5, and the aforementioned c5 is coming. Rook c1, queen e7. And to be honest, I'd say at the moment white is slightly better because of this b6 pawn being a chronic weakness and alpha 0, not surprisingly, tries to jump at it. Now rook b8 is very natural. It comes with rook d1, c4, and knight e5. Now, in this position, I'd feel that white is slightly, slightly better, but not by much. It's slightly better for white, but if black plays correctly, it's equalish. And to be honest with you, this is the nightmare of computer chess. It's a half closed position with nothing really going on, no tactics, just slow strategic chess which humans excel at. Queen e6, f4, good move, stabilizing that beast on e5. Queen e6, okay, we froze a little bit. Queen e6, f4, rook d8, queen d2, knight f8, knight c3, knight g6, rook f1, queen d6, a4. Yeah, now, there's just slow positional struggle going on. Nothing really terribly much. Rook c8, kind of a weird move, although he's kind of getting rid of this tactical idea of knight takes c4, e3, knight e7, g4, knight e8, f5, f6, knight f3. Now, my play was pretty nice, so I think it was pretty good. It's a, it was an okay positional way of playing, but black was doing great as well. I think the position should be around roughly equal. But shockingly, white is going to win. Queen d7, queen f2, knight d6. Re doing a little bit of a maneuvering, just putting the knight to a better square. Knight d2. Another good move, I like this one, because it all goes against these ideas of knight, a potential knight e4, and white just puts enough pressure so that it will never happen. Rook f8, slightly mysterious, but not bad. Queen g3, rook d8, rook f4. Now, rook f4, I tried to make sense of rook f4, but I still can't. It might want to go against the idea of knight e4, but it's not really a threat. And if knight e4 is not coming, I don't know what this rook is doing on f4. Knight f7, rook f2. And actually alpha 0 realized that, okay, so you're not jumping on e4, I'll go back. Not that rook f2 does anything. Rook e8, h3. Again, the move I was talking about. Alpha 0 loves this waiting move, even though it has a function. It creates this luft again on h2 and protects this g4 pawn. Queen d6, knight f1. Okay, nothing special. Queen a3. Now, <clears throat> this is the moment we need a stronger opponent for alpha 0. Queen a3 is clearly not doing much apart from attacking the rook on c1. So this move is just one step in the wrong direction. Rook c2, just getting rid of that threat. h5, a terrible, a terrible move. So to be honest with you, this position is roughly equal. I wouldn't claim any advantage for white after queen d6. It's roughly equals. But h5, 
is just we would reprimand anyone who plays h5. This is just too much. Even though I've seen computers suggest it, that's just too much. You shouldn't be doing that. And now alpha 0 slowly starts to get a grip on the position. But before that, I don't think he had any advantage. h5, queen c7, and yep, he hits on the weak spot immediately as the bishop and b6 pawn attacked in the same time and now black is just worse again. Queen d6, queen takes d6, rook takes d6, knight g3, h4. Again, not a great idea. It's just creating a weakness on g4. Um, it's more of like a weakness than a strength. Knight h5, knight g5, rook f1, king h7, knight f4, rook d8, king h2, and black is basically waiting until he loses the pawn. Takes, takes, and slowly black just loses as he's a pawn down against the computer and should be just losing. And he's just easily losing. Now, some of these moves are still weird, but okay, he's a pawn up and he's just going to win this game. They exchange pieces. Rook c1, rook takes c3, and with a terrible bishop on a8, this shouldn't be terribly hard to win. Bishop f3, rook h7, rook g6, check, gives the pawn, which I still don't understand. Rook g6 would be a more normal move, at least hoping for something. If you move your king, I'll just take your pawn. So some moves are hard to understand by Stockfish, to be honest. And okay, he won this game later on. And as I mentioned before, computers don't seem to have a firm grasp of closed positions still. This was the conclusion after the Kasparov Deep Blue match, and I think it still holds. And we will see it here, e4, e5. Bishop b5, knight f6, d3, bishop c5, takes, takes, castle, knight d7, knight d2, castle. And looking at this, it's tough to play against the Berlin. You need to have some opening knowledge. And in this way, I think this was slightly unfair for Stockfish to have to play this, or playing this was unfortunate because without an opening book, it's very hard to get an advantage for white. And actually, I would like, like to invite the audience to find the move Stockfish played. If you haven't seen the game, can you give me some moves you would like to play in this position? Knight c4. Knight c4. That's a very, very logical move. No, it wasn't played by Stockfish. C3, actually, he will play C, I mean, it will play C3 later on in the second game. I mean, the other white game he played. He actually played this move, which to me makes zero sense. And I, as a grandmaster, I, I don't know what white wants with queen e1. Maybe, maybe in the long future, b4. Other than that, I don't understand what queen e1 stands for. f6, knight c4, rook f7. And looking at rook f7 is still kind of a strange move. Rook e8 would be the natural move with going with the same plan that alpha 0 will find, knight f8, knight e6. But rook f7 is a little bit strange. Rook f7, a4. And now I almost understood what Stockfish was banking on, trying to play b4. And then it would make sense. OK, so black plays bishop f8, king h1, knight c5. So, he, so the computer goes to knight c5 and then from there to knight e6. a5, knight e6. And now plays a move. I don't understand, again, from Stockfish, and I don't think it's too good either. 
What could have stockfish come up with in this position? C3. C3 that would drop a pawn, so it doesn't play that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some <laughs> king g1 would be too much, I think, even for stockfish. He took on e5, and to be honest, humans would never do that because in the long term, this just, need, just should lose, and it will lose easily. And the other thing I don't understand if you're playing queen e1, at least play b4 in the future, or at least develop your pieces. And after, let's say, c5, bishop c3, knight e3, and the typical game. But knight e5 feels like the move that you should never play. If you're a computer watching this from 300 years from now, or a human, you shouldn't sacrifice your knight for some vague compensation. And I don't know, I still don't know why the computer decided to take, to take on e5. Takes, takes, rook f6, knight g4, knight e5, rook e7, a6. And okay, Stockfish is trying to bank on the structure, but it's still a piece. c5, f4, queen e8. A takes, bishop takes b7, queen a5, knight d4, just posting this knight on a healthy square, also hitting on c2. Queen c3, rook e6. Can you take on c5? Maybe, maybe. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know. Maybe even liquidating. I don't know. Maybe this is too much and not unnecessary, but it's still two pieces. Um, or just defend the, the knight somehow. Just knight e2, your knight e6 back. Yeah, queen c5 still seems like a better move. So it's kind of strange that computer decides to play queen c3, rook e6, bishop e3, knight c4, rook b4, b3, a5 takes. Now he took the now it took the pawn. Knight c4, g3, h6, queen a5 takes another pawn. But now this bishop will be very, very powerful here. Bishop h3, rook g1, rook d7, queen e5. Queen takes, knight takes. And now, white does have a lot of pawns, but this king on h1 and the rook on g1 are just terrible. Knight c4, g5, rook c1, bishop g7. And this is the usual thing. If the pieces come to alive on g7 and h3, then the pieces will outweigh the pawns in the long run. Rook a8, which is again a move I don't understand. Knight f3, bishop b2, bishop c3. Just again, interestingly, off zero is just always trying to dominate. Bishop d7, knight d2, bishop d2, one, g2, bishop g4, another form of domination. Just encaging the king. Rook e1, bishop d2, rook f1, rook a2. So what? Stockfish wanted this after bishop e2, there's rook f2, and the rook would capture one of the, pawn, one of the bishops. So it played rook a2, h3 takes, bishop f4 takes, bishop e5, and later Stockfish lost this, objectively lost position against alpha 0. And we come up to the last game which will be also tough. And as a wrap-up idea, I think alpha zero is brilliant in tactics and in domination, but in close positions and positional understanding, it, there is still room to improve. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. Alpha zero is black again against stockfish. D3, bishop c5, takes, takes, castle, knight d7, and c3 comes. 
castle d4. And <clears throat> I still don't like this plan of c3, d4, because it's illogical. Black is hoping to open up the position, as the bishops usually shine in positions which are open. But c3, d4 usually helps the opening of the position, and it will happen in this game as well. Bishop d6, bishop g5. Now, this move is very good. At least Stockfish is trying to keep the position closed. Queen e8. I think it's a question of taste if you want to play f6 or queen e8. They roughly seem around equal strength. Rook e1, f6, bishop h4, queen f7, knight d2, a5. Good idea. He's trying to gain some space with moving his pawns. Bishop g3, rook e8. Now, white could start opening up the position, but as we talked about it earlier, that's not a great idea. Queen c2, knight f8, hinting on ideas of going to e6 or g6, depending on white's plan, c4, c5, d5. And the position closed up. b6, knight h4, g6, taking away this f juicy f5 square. Knight f3 back, bishop d7, rook a d1. Now everything so far was fairly logical. Maybe Stockfish could have considered of closing off this side of the board just for fun, you know, stopping black from any, any potential idea of gaining space on the queen side. Rook d1. Again, we can see that the computers will start struggling in this type of position. So rook d1 move actually doesn't do anything. For example, what could we do in this position? As humans, what kind of plans can we for for, do for white? Yes, for white. It's not that easy, it's true, but I think it's possible. H3, yeah. H3, H2. Yeah. So white could have played h3. And let, let's say if just black passes, knight f1, knight h2 this way, and maybe planning f3 or f4 later on. f4 is a bit risky, but it's an idea. So that's something that could have been played. But rook d1 is a mysterious move. It makes no sense, because the position will never open up. Rook e7, OK. So he's kind of planning to double h3, queen g7. Now, in these positions, I'm sometimes at loss what the computers are trying to do. Queen g7 doesn't make sense after rook e7. At least if he would have brought the rook on e8, that would make sense. Queen g7, it feels like moves are just made randomly. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, it. Yeah, if. Yeah. Queen g7, as you mentioned, you're correct. If black is to do h6, knight h7, rook f8, f5, it would make perfect sense. But let's watch what they, they're going to do. Queen c3, rook a8. And from a human perspective, this makes no sense at all. If you want. If you move your queen to g7. Why didn't you bring your rook to f8? So that's kind of a mystery to me. Queen c3, rook a8, bishop a3, h6. So that's a good move. So I see some positional intelligence in the position, which is not unheard of from an AI machine. Bishop h4, rook f7, bishop g3, and what will alpha zero play in this position, I ask you. F5, I might have too many pieces lined against on E5. Knight H7, yeah, that would make sense. But it plays rook Fe7, which makes no sense at all, because 
Okay, it would make some sense if we say that the position okay. is equal. Yeah? Okay, bishop h4, rook f7, bishop g3, and now a4. Okay, I understand that the computer maybe wants to play f5, but it's fairly logical to choose a different plan. So bishop h4 comes here, rook f7, a4, king h1, rook e7, bishop h4, rook f7. I still don't understand why are they shuffling back and forth. It, in this position, my first thought would be going g5, knight g6, h5, and g4. That's my first idea. Going rook e7 and rook f7, the computers have the luxury of making this okay-ish moves. But if it were to be a king's Indian, you don't have the luxury for these, move, these kind of moves. So rook e7, bishop now. Alpha 0 decides to play g5, bishop g3, knight g6. I would assume that he's trying to go h5, g4, or just hopping with the knight to f4. And the reason I'm kind of perplexed with black's play is that black is clearly better. He should be, or it should be pushing, but it doesn't, and just waited with the rooks. But OK, he plays g5. Knight g6, knight f1, rook f7 again, which I don't understand much. Knight e7, queen d3, h5. Okay, so he wants to play. It wants to play g4, h4, g, knight c8. Hmm. Rook e2, g4, queen h7. Okay, kind of hinting at ideas on e4. King g1, bishop f8. Aha, okay. So there is some, yes, positional intelligence there. The knight is going to d6. So it doesn't really want to jump on f4, it decides to jump on d6 instead. Knight b1, knight c3, bishop h6, rook f1. And we can state that black is just much, much better. Rook a8, king h2, king f8, king g1, queen g6. And alpha 0 is just slowly improving the position. And this is better for a human, and this is better for a computer as well. f4, I don't like f4. Stockfish should have just sitted and waited. f4 takes, rook f3 takes, king e7. And now as the black king went all to that peaceful square of e7, is ready to launch an attack with rook g8. Bishop e1, queen h7, rook g7 takes, takes. The exchange of rooks. But the weakness is on e4, and c4 will tell. Knight d2, bishop g4, king h2, king b7, b3. Again, not a move that I'd consider. It mostly helps black. Takes, takes, queen g6, knight d2, bishop d1, knight f3. I don't know. Can't we take on e4? Knight. Ah, we can't because the bishop is hanging. Sorry. Bishop a4, knight d2, king e7, bishop f2, queen g4, queen f3, bishop d1, takes, takes, a4, knight b7, knight b1, knight a5, bishop e3. This is positionally lost for white by now. But bishop e3 still is a move you would never consider. I still would try at least to defend the c4 pawn and hope for the best. OK, I will lose it, but at least I'd try. So bishop e3 doesn't make any sense. I don't think it does. It's already lost, though. Bishop d7, knight c3, and alpha 0 as a machine slowly but surely, takes all the pawns and wins this opposite colored endgame, which should be trivial as, the, as, he, as it has two passed pawns, king f5, king e6. And Stockfish resigned because with side passers, it's not likely that white can save this game. So all in all, I think alpha 0 
has the rating of a human rating of 2830, so it's like an elite human, not close to 32,000 that they claimed. I think 3,200, thank you. So not any way close to 3,200 because for one, Stockfish was giving a lot of points away. As we've seen in the previous three games, Stockfish had equal positions, just threw away the games with terrible moves like h5 and queen a3. So alpha zero is a wonderful and could potentially re reach, it could potentially reach 3,000 levels when looking at the Mihaltal-like games, but it's like a 2,800, 2,830 level human player when playing a positional chess. Even, I'd even prefer humans in these close positions, but still a great performance by Alpha Zero. So looking forward for more matches with Alpha Zero and from Stockfish. Thank you.